big love to my dog, it's Hidden Leaf, for coming through and sponsoring your boy on the Patreon. Anyone else who wants to join the team, receive exclusive daily content, interact with the YB, patreon.com slash the YB, link in the description. Anthony El Jefe Joshua has ordered his servant, has instructed his servant, Deontay Chicken Leg Wilder, if Wilder does not get Merkled by Pillow Fist Fury, if Wilder doesn't get Steve Cunningham by Tyson Fury, and he is successful and retains his WBC title, Wilder vs AJ will take place in the UK, he said the following. Joshua is adamant it makes much more sense for Wilder to travel to these shores rather than himself heading stateside, he told IFL TV. 80,000 people or an arena that can hold 15,000 elsewhere. It makes sense to have the fight here in the UK. Otherwise, also, I am the boss. And I, I hold all the cards, I hold all the numbers, despite what Eddie Earn, despite Eddie Earn Hearn trying to give away everything I've worked for in a 50-50 split, the r truth is, I, the fight will take place wherever I damn please it to take place. If I choose to hold the fight on the moon, that's where it will be going. Wilder can drag his skinny little legs all the way to the moon and get knocked out on there, no doubt. Now, my thoughts on it, obviously, my thoughts aren't rocket science on this one. Eddie Hearn can be as goofy as he wants. Next thing you'll hear Eddie Hearn saying, I think Eddie Hearn's been, been, um, I think he's been MK ultra I think, I think Eddie Hearn's been spending too much time in the States. I reckon, I've heard from some sources that Eddie Hearn's been hanging out at these hotels and some next CIA thing's been happening. Al, Al Heyman set up, Eddie Hearn's been sleeping, they've been pumping a whole load of mind control, mind control, uh, narcotics into his room and he's waking up just off his head talking about oh yeah Wilder and Fury have earned 50-50 oh yeah well Joshua has lost to be fair AJ, AJ's got a loss now and these two men are, these two men who have a draw on their record oh yeah they're undefeated all this goofy stuff but like I said despite Eddie Hearn trying to talk about how, how, how great Wilder and Fury are the facts remain the same Wilder, Fury sell no tickets they don't sell no tickets in the US, and they definitely don't sell no tickets in the UK. That's factual stuff there. I've got another video coming soon. This good wild, and I actually called it, scarily enough, I actually called it that, be careful, Wilder vs Fury 2, that they don't start doing goofy stuff with the, with the, with the numbers. What, do we, what happens now? We find out, in fact let me say that for a new video, but essentially, Al Heyman and Deontay Wilder and Fury's team have started doing goofy stuff. They've started pricing his tickets at a thousand dollars each for the for the nosebleeds. Complete joke. Yeah, May of a Pacquiao with them prices. Trying to put so what they do, what they're trying to do is, and I, I I called it before it even happened. I said, watch out, guys, for this Wilder versus Fury too. I've got a feeling. They're going to come out and start, oh yeah, well, well, we sold 2 million pay-per-views and oh, well, um, oh, we were selling, we made a, a record gate. I, I had a feeling, and I said, like I said, I, I said this before, I'm not saying it now, I said it before, be careful. And what happens now, 2-2s, two they've started playing with the numbers. Never seen Wilder's, never seen Wilder having, Wilder's all of a sudden got £20,000 tickets out of nowhere. This dude never sold, couldn't sell £2,000 tickets. Now all of a sudden, he's selling, he's selling out £20,000 tickets. Complete joke. Absolute joke. But, and, and it's going to be, it's kind of a scary situation from AJ's point of view, because if Eddie Hearn was happy to give away 50-50 and all of these, all of this power over to Fury and Wilder, that was before they started making crazy numbers up. So uh, I'm not sure where, what's going to happen now. Don't be shocked if you if you see Eddie Hearn posted up talking about, oh well, yeah, we did see we did see Wilder and Fury sell two million pay per view buyers. So it, it looks like AJ's going to have to take a back seat if he wants to get the fight done. That's what we, that's what that's what we're going to be hearing next. But like I said, in reality, without Al Heyman playing with numbers and without Al Heyman MK Ultra and Eddie Hearn, the facts are AJ does the numbers. AJ is the A side. And I don't know what's going on here because. When Floyd Mayweather was the A side, yeah, it's interesting because when he was the A side, all the LDBC and whatnot, they were saying, "Yeah, man, huh, Manny Pacquiao, 
he got to understand. He the B-side, man. Oh, man. You know what I mean? There, it, there was a good order to it. Most people understood, apart from crazy Manny Pacquiao fans, most people understood that Floyd Mayweather was the A-side. And guess what happened in that fight? Mayweather got 60% and Pacquiao got 40%. And that was even no. Pacquiao, in his own right, could sell a million pay-per-view buys. Pacquiao versus Marquez sold a million pay-per-views all night and day. Pacquiao versus De La Hoya sold pay-per-views all night and day. Yeah? Simple as that. No problem. Pacquiao was a pay-per-view star. For me, a pay-per-view star is someone who can sell a million pay-per-views. Yeah? When you can do that, you're a pay-per-view star. Wilder comes in. 300. Wilder and Fury. So-called biggest biggest names in the world. Wilder and Fury. 300,000 pay-per-view buys. Yeah? Spence and Garcia. Two midgets. No power. Two midgets, no power. And whatever. No bottle either. Get in there and they outsell Fury and Wilder by something like 10-15%. Two unknown midgets outsold so-called two biggest heavyweights in the world. Allegedly. Now obviously... Al Heyman and his team have been listening to the YB. They've caught on. Oh, you know what? Since since there is no official numbers, what's the point being honest? What's the point coming out and mugging ourselves off? We might as well come out and just start making numbers up. And that's what they're going to do now. You've already seen it for the Wilder versus Ortiz fight. All of a sudden, Wilder out of nowhere can now sell tickets on his own. Even that, he can't even do that. Even the numbers they made up. Oh, yeah, well, he sold, he sold 300,000 versus Ortiz. Or even the ones they made up were weak. That's weak in reality. Because when Floyd Mayweather fought similar opponents, he was selling six, seven hundred thousand, twice as many. So they can't even they can't even lie well, if the truth be known. But anyway, like I was saying, these cats don't sell no tickets nowhere. They never have, they never will. People just don't people are just not interested in seeing Wilder. The whole reason back in the eighties and whatnot was interesting was because they were interested in fights, yeah? Who's going to win? I don't know. Hollyfield, Tyson, or Tyson versus Lennox. They were both two athletes, two athletes with knockout power and names in their own right and the and talkability in their own right. That's what made it interesting. And not only that, actually, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't just the fact. Sorry, that two names who had all these like, had the attributes were coming together. It was also the fact that each of the two names had over the last ten years built. A name and a brand. And that name and a brand was built not on hot air, not on talking about oh oh me, I wanna I wanna I wanna K I L L someone in the ring. Oh it wasn't built on that just talking, it was built on results. Yeah? Lewis versus Tyson was big. Hollowfield versus Tyson was big because the two individuals were both dangerous power punchers and they had a resume of ten years of essential greatness, beating Beating other heavyweights who are, who are dangerous time in time again. See what I mean? That's how you build a name. Now look at Wilder. People are confused why Wilder and Fury don't sell pay-per-views, don't sell tickets, don't sell nothing. And the reason is, they haven't shown me their legacy. Show me Fury or Wilder's legacy of beating people who... Never mind beating... Show me, never mind legacy. Show me one person Fury's beat who's got dangerous power. Klitschko, maybe, yeah. All right, Klitschko, mate, yeah. All right, all right, throw Klitschko in there. But he ducked the rematch. So there isn't, there was no consistency of Fury beating... Oh, look, he beat... Look, Fury's beat five people with dangerous power and really interesting competitions. Doesn't have that. Wilder, the same. Wilder literally has no one. To be fair to Fury, at least Fury's got Klitschko. Wilder's got no one. Wilder has no one at Klitschko's level or above. No one at all. He's fought a whole load of... 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 bums. Literally. And that's why he don't sell. You, you, the reason you get... How you get momentum is by beating good, solid, dangerous people time and time again. Dillian White could have been one of them for him. Hasn't wanted to do it, though. Usyk would be one of them. Daniel Dubois would be one of them. But you don't hear these names coming out of Wilder's mouth. In fact, when Wilder got... When Daniel Dubois put it on Wilder, Wilder was saying, Oh, man, oh... oh. Daniel Dubois, he's gonna be a great champion. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not sure I'm gonna fight him in my time. But in his own time, he's gonna be a great champ. That's what I mean. You should be saying, listen, that young buck will get knocked out. He best not come nowhere near me. Otherwise, he's gonna find his, he's gonna find he's on his back with his toes curling towards the canvas. Simple as that. Yeah. 
But anyway, the reason I've given you that background is to say that AJ, historically, Povetkin, Takam, even Takam. What Takams does Wilder have on his resume? What do you think Takam would do to um, Bumzeal? Takam would be all over Bumzeal. Let's get it right. Takam was all over Chizora, as an example. And we know how dangerous Chizora is. Yeah? Wilder doesn't, need, Wilder doesn't, need, doesn't even have a Takam on his, on his resume. A real, a tough, a tough, solid, mid-tier fighter. Wilder has none of them. There's a whole load of stiffs. In fact, I'll give him some credit. The one... Bermain's de Verne the first time. Wilder vs. Bermain's de Verne won. I'd say that Bermain's de Verne in January 2015, that one that turned up, the World Championship one, he was probably the level of Takam, I'd say. That's fair enough. So he's beat one Takam. That's all he's got. AJ on the other hand has Takam, Klitschko, Povetkin, Ruiz. Uh, you know what I mean? You keep going. I can't even remember half his resume, but the whole rest of them. Josie Apago. You know what I mean? You can keep reeling off names, reeling them off. And that's why. Ages in the position he is, and that's why he will tell everyone where he's going. That's why, if it's in the UK, it's in the UK. If it's in Nigeria, it's in Nigeria, wherever he pleases. And Wilder has no say-so. 